Hello everybody and welcome back to Fight a Subscriber, where a subscriber chucks a craft in my general direction and I throw it into combat against a selection of my own fighters which you can see here. No pressing announcements this week so we will get straight into meeting the craft that our random number generator has kindly selected for us this time. So it's a return for the F-15C Eagle by Daniel Garcia. Uh, last season this craft could be found propping up the rest of the leaderboard but this is a new and improved version. It's been rebalanced, it now has leading edge control surfaces, it now has gimbaling engines. All in all, a more fearsome competitor than it was last time around. Now I do like a KSP recreation of a real life craft, but uh, before we see whether or not this lives up to the stellar reputation of its real world counterpart, we're going to take it for a test flight. So it turns out that in terms of manoeuvrability, this is a big improvement on its predecessor. I can actually now do my favoured figure of eights around the VAB and the control tower, which the uh, Season 1 version of the F-15 certainly would not have been able to manage. Now, despite being a very stable craft in terms of its centre of lift and centre of mass placement, it can maintain a surprisingly high angle of attack. Uh, it doesn't have quite the same wing area as some of the other craft, uh, in this competition, so it's not the most manoeuvrable we've ever seen, but uh, I'd still bet on it to get a lot more than the four points it managed last time around. First up then, as ever, the Eagles will go up against my Cyclones. Let's get them into the air. And so the first round of our competition begins. Uh, first thing to notice is that these F-15s, they do go for a much higher altitude. Uh, I'm not sure what their default altitude is. Uh, I think I saw the... Six thousand. With a minimum altitude of two thousand. Okay, that's different. Oh, and one of the cyclones is gone almost immediately to a missile kill. Just a cloud of debris there. Now, these cyclones are quite vulnerable to uh, to missile kills um, and have proved so during those other rounds of the uh, during the other rounds of this competition but uh, yeah that is um, that is advantage F-15s as I was saying they do seem to uh, have adopted the tactic of going to a higher altitude and then dropping down uh, sort of onto their opponents which we see with the Kepler craft this season, but it's kind of been a bit of a hit and miss strategy. Um, but anyway, Jebediah Kerman, not really in any particular fight at the moment. We have one of the Cyclones there. Daphne Kerman flips out a little bit, trying to avoid missiles, regains control. Popping chaff, whereas that missile goes very close, but Daphne Kerman manages to avoid it without much trouble. So I'm guessing it is Richmore Kerman in the thick of things here. Loses one of his own missiles onto one of the Cyclones. Has a bit of gunfire incoming. And that's getting very close. Richmore Kerman's not careful. These Cyclones could level things up very quickly indeed. Loses another missile. Bit of a dogfight going on over here. Now I think... Oh, and that is one of the other Cyclones. Hit by a missile, disappears from the Vessel Switcher. I was about to say, those um, F-15s need to make their uh, their numeric advantage count, because I think the Cyclones might have just a, a lick of extra manoeuvrability on them. And that is the last Cyclone. Shredded in a hail of gunfire, and that is a very quick victory for the F-15s. Well, well, well. Certainly did make that numeric advantage pay. Richmond Kerman here just trying to get guns onto the debris. Add insult to injury. As, as the cockpit and the nose cone goes flying past. Ah, oh dear. Anyway, let's move on and see what happens in the next fight. So, next up, the F-15Cs will be going up against my more unconventional craft, the Clubtail. Let's get this one started. The F-15 still climbing as the competition starts. Again, trying to go for that higher altitude. Um, I'm not sure how effective that element of the strategy was last time. I think um, 
some lucky missile, well, a, a lucky missile kill to start with. Certainly didn't do them any harm, but uh, missiles go in both directions. It looks like all the craft are safely avoiding for now. The other thing to notice as I was looking at the uh, the default altitude on this craft, it's got it's got a, an altitude floor of 2,000 meters, which is interesting. I'm not sure if during development these had a bit of an issue with crashing into the ground. That's normally the reason you find um, sort of slightly higher altitude floors on these craft. But I mean that could prove tricky in a dogfight situation. Something's exploded. That is one of the eagles. Where is that? I'm assuming that's a missile kill because there's just a cloud of debris there. The eagles already at a numeric disadvantage. Jebediah there. Daffy Kerman trying to avoid the incoming gunfire. Now the, um, that is one of the club tails gone. Where did that happen? Oh, and as I try to search for the remains of that club tail, is that you there? That's you there. I think that must have been a, no, that's more of the F-15 debris. That's the club tail debris. And as I say that, Daffy Kerman's F-15 gets heavily damaged. What was I trying to say? Yes, the club tails are, will be the more manoeuvrable of the two craft. And if you've got um, if you've got a less manoeuvrable craft against the more manoeuvrable craft, you kind of have to hope that um, the less manoeuvrable craft, um, if they want to win, you've got to kind of rest on strategy. And if you can get a numeric advantage, it's all about trying to make it count. But if you're at a numeric disadvantage, and that makes it very difficult to come back from, and that. That is another one of the club tails, taken out by a missile. Still showing up on the vessel mover. Rowena Kerman will have a tough time coming back from that one, though. Jebediah Kerman, not in a particularly fit state to fight. Daffy Kerman, oh, they're both, both the Eagles have been reasonably heavily damaged. Shawnee Kerman coming in here. Let's lose a missile. Relatively close range. I think that was a sidewinder. That's the sort of range where those sidewinders can do a lot of damage. It has to break off. It has a missile coming in. Popping flares. So I assume that is a sidewinder. That comes in and it finishes off the club tail. Oh my word. Both eagles pretty heavily damaged, but nonetheless managed to turn this around. Well, that is a turn up for the books. Let's um, let's move on to the next one. So the F-15s, perhaps a little bit lucky in that last fight, but their two damaged craft did manage to finish the job, uh, which means they'll end today on a minimum of eleven points which might already be enough to see them into the top four, I'll have to check, but uh, they can make it a certainty now in this fight against my Panthers. Let's get them into the air. So the competition begins, the third and final round. Jebediah having to break off almost immediately for, uh, for some missiles. Um, I think that might be the AI getting confused with missiles from his own side. Hmm. Anyway, here we go. The uh, the Eagles need only one kill to guarantee themselves a top four spot. Will it be an early missile kill? Yes, it will. One of the Panthers is gone almost immediately. So the F-15s will be ending today in the top four. Potentially a place in the final there. But they will have to make... Um, have to make the rest of this count. They could make it the first clean sweep of the series. They're certainly at the advantage for that now. That's the uh, last of the the last of that panther crashes into the ground. I don't mind admitting I would not have put money on the F-15s to be the first craft to uh, to do the clean sweep. But yeah, it'd be uh, be interesting to bet against them now. Jebediah Kerman popping some chaff, trying to avoid a missile. Gunfire starting to come in. I think that was uh, 
more in hope than expectation, that last bit of gunfire. Um, how are our Panthers doing? Yep, gunfire coming in. It's the Panthers doing the shooting. Rowena Kerman trying to lay guns into Jebediah's F-15. Where's the, uh, where's the spare F-15? Where's the F-15 left over? Goes for the missiles instead. F-15s do have quite a bit of power behind them. Where's that? Where is that other F-15? Yep, Gemini here trying to pull some manoeuvres, trying to, uh, trying to shake that... Oh! What happened there? One of the other Panthers is already gone. It's, it's three against one. This could be it. This could be the first clean sweep. A missile comes in. Misses, I... I was trying to look for that, um... Trying to look for that other panther. I could only see, like, two other craft, but I... That must have been the two F-15s. I don't know what happened to that other panther. Where it's gone. I hear something crashing into the ground now. I'm assuming that's whatever remains of it, but... This panther, yeah, is now in a lot of trouble. And that is it gone. That is the panther gone. I think that was a missile kill. I was just trying to switch to it, but... A little too late, as it turns out. Daffy Kerman. Trying to just... <laughs> add insult to injury. Shred the craft some more. But that is astonishing. That is the first clean sweep of Fighter Subscriber. And as I said, I would not have put money on the F-15s to do it, but... Do it, they have. Let's go look at the final scores then. So somebody has finally done it. As I said, the F-15 becomes the very first craft to perform a clean sweep on Fighter Subscriber. Uh, perhaps a little bit lucky in places, but then there's always an element of chance to these things. Uh, and with nine kills and eight survivors, so close to a perfect score, that puts the F-15C Eagle onto 17 points, almost certainly guaranteeing it a place in this season's final and we uh, unfortunately have to say farewell to the Legion Atmos fighter which is pushed out of that top four. Thank you very much to Daniel Garcia for this craft. It uh, it certainly took me by surprise. I don't know about anyone else. Um, if you'd like me to fight any of your craft it is now most certainly too late to get it into this season of Fighter Subscriber but uh, feel free to send it to me anyway. Who knows what will happen in the future. Uh, details in the description. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, link down below, and uh, I will be back with some more Fighter Subscriber very soon. But for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.